All right, guys, we are back for the end of quarter episode on Canvas, finalizing some grades here. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you may like, some things you may not like. These are options available on Canvas. I'm by no means saying that you have to do any of these. I'm just showing you what you can do and what happens if you do them. Now, the first option I want to show you is that Canvas has a option to scale grades. So I have this test going on here, and I can take and click on my three dots, and then I can go down here and select Curve the Grades. And Canvas will show you what the curve is going to look like before you do it. So for example, if I change that, sorry we had an announcement interrupt us there. As I was saying, if I was to change this number to a 75, you can see how it would change the whole scale. And everybody's going to look at that and say, wow, that's just amazing. But here's the problem with it. It does not treat everybody equal. Uh, Miss um, Kirby figured out that what it does is it actually creates a bell curve. And in that bell curve, it assumes that no one's going to get higher than 100. Somebody's got to fail. And it will adjust everybody's grades differently. So I tried this on one of my tests. And I had a child who had 102, and it dropped her down to 100. I had a child who had a 70, and it raised them to a 74. And I had a child who had a 60, and it bumped them all the way up to, I think, a 72 or something like that. So it does not apply the same points to every student. So personally, I don't like that. I don't think that's fair. I feel if you're going to curve the grades, you need to give your um, treat every student equal but that is entirely up to you and your decision. So with that said, I don't like this one, so we're not going to do this one, but there is another option available on Canvas, and I've been using this one for years when I was, we were just in iNow, and oh, now on Canvas, I'm going to show you how to do that here, and that is to drop a score. Um, I've always had the idea that everyone deserves a bad day. If a child, we don't know if the child's dog got ran over the night before. We don't know if they were up all night because mom and dad were fighting. We don't know what happened to them the night before. Every child deserves a bad day. So one thing I've always secretly done, I never tell the students this, but I always drop the lowest quiz score and the lowest test score at the end of the quarter. And most of the kids, this makes very little difference to their average. I mean, it may fluctuate at two or three points. But for the kid who had a really bad night, this can be a lifesaver. It keeps them from failing a course or losing a letter grade on a course because something bad happened to them on one event. Way to do this is you go into assignments right here. And then once you're inside assignments, you go to what you want to drop. So under my test, I'm going to click my three dots. I'm going to hit edit. And of course, I can't do it here because I don't have any tests there. So let me show you where I did it on something. You have to actually have to have assignments in there. So I'm going to pause for just a second. All right, I am back. I have added two tests to that category. So now I click on my three dots. And when I click on my three dots, I'm going to hit edit and look at the options that we have. We have a low score to drop and a high score to drop or ignore. If I hover over it, I've got arrows here, so I can just arrow up how many of the assignments I want to consider dropping. Why you would ever drop someone's high score, I don't know. That seems just cruel and cold-hearted. But dropping a low score, I can see that. And then when you do that, I'm going to hit Save. And now you can see under test, there is a rule, one rule listed that says drop the lowest score. Now here's the thing. What I would encourage you to do if you're going to do something like that is to take and do it. And then as soon as you get your grades transferred over to iNow or whatever grading platform your school is using to, for your master grades, then I would go back and undo it because when we roll into second quarter, that rule is still going to be there. So after you get all your grades finalized, I would take and undo that before you actually got into second quarter so that everything would be um, back the way it was and the grades would look right as the kids work through that quarter. I hope you have found this tutorial here useful. If you have any questions, let me know and y'all have a great day.